Hello, it's Howard Rheingold. This is the second of my ongoing probes into the dynamics of attention, particularly in situations where multiple seductive attractions from the online world compete with physical co-presence. The, the classroom is now a classic example of that, and I realized when, when talking to my students about this that they didn't see what it looked like from, from where I stood as the teacher. And although I know that many of them are productively using their multitasking attention to look up the things that I'm talking about, I also know from my own experience and from a certain amount of just looking at what's on students' screens when I'm not the teacher, that there's a, a, a melange of things going on. Um, when I'm standing up in, in front of a class and talking to them, though, it's very hard to tell which of the students who are not making eye contact are paying attention to me, and I think that's something that teachers just accept these days. So I thought it would help our ongoing exploration in, in this classroom to show what it looked like from where I stood. What's the deal with these pictures I'm taking here? Um, I am really, I'm really trying to develop some kind of curriculum about attention in general and about attention in the classroom specifically and um, and use you not just as guinea pigs, but as, uh, as critics to, to help understand uh, how this might work. So you remember the first class, uh, I asked you to turn off your cell phones, close your laptops, shut your eyes, and watch your attention for 60 seconds. And so this is, um, this is what resulted. <laughs> Um, around the world, there were no meetings in which the subject was, um, what's going to happen to pedagogy when we turn on internet in the classroom? It just happened. So um, that's, the, that's the world uh, in which I have entered as a teacher, and I accept that at least part of the challenge is to try to remain as, as interesting as the rest of the internet. So this is... Uh, so uh, a little sh little shot of what it looks like from where I stand. So <laughs> it's uh, what I'm doing here. Is that the way I really got started on, on this was that uh, I was at a conference in Seattle that 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 uh, Microsoft invited a bunch of people from around the world who are uh, relate people who spend a lot of time on social media. Most of us know each other online, and people who are coming from Finland and Japan. Most of us didn't see each other on a daily basis, face to face. So this was really a great opportunity to get together. We got together in this room, and everybody had their five minutes to stand up and, and start a discussion. And everyone else was in the back channel. There's a chat room for for this, and this really started at the Emerging Technologies Conference about four years ago when they started turning on Wi-Fi at these conferences and all of the attendees started uh, chatting about it, in some cases projecting the chat be behind the, the speaker, and in, in some cases um, they had something called the Hecklebot in which people could send IMs to it and have it appear while a, a, a speaker was, was talking. And I mentioned at this conference that I wasn't sure whether we really know what we're doing with this back channel. It certainly is disconcerting to me to look out and not get eye contact. I know that many of the people who are looking at their computers are paying attention. I know that some of them are not, but you know, uh, the Japanese have this concept that any public speech is an exchange of key, which is really a, 
a word for attention as well as life energy. And uh, I feel that, that that is broken when, when you are looking at your laptop and I'm talking to you. So when I got home from having said this at the conference, it was an open chat room. So people had heard about it, participated in the chat room who weren't there. One of my students had been a student in my class a whole year. This is the first time I ever taught a class. I was very naive about what was going on. I didn't know what to do about it. Um, she had been f pretty quiet in class. She sent me an email saying that she had been in that chat room and I would be interested in her project. And her project was a uh, chat channel for all of the students in the School of Information, wh which they used all year in all of their classes, including my class, which I didn't know about. And so I understood when people smile at the same time that they were chatting with each other. Um, a lot of email ensued between us and she's a graduate student. In fact, she's going to come and talk to this class later uh, in, in the semester. A couple of things emerged. One, one was that a, a very strong sense of entitlement on her part to put her attention where she wanted. It's, the, it's a marketplace, and if I can't compete with the rest of the attention, the uh, rest of the internet for attention, that's my problem. But the other thing that emerged from that conversation was that this has just emerged wild. It has, there has not really been any attempt to try, try to systematize it. So as you can see, the students in the class on virtual community and social media, which I am teaching at, at Berkeley for the first time, have been wonderfully supportive and helpful in trying to probe ways in which we can examine our attention and begin putting together some ways to train attention from these probes. I hope to develop a curriculum that will help me and other teachers and our students begin to understand what is happening with this combination of classroom, student, professor, learning material, wireless internet, and attention.